Okay, so today we're going to be talking about. Um, I, I did have planned to talk about uh, radioactive decay. Um, but actually there's a problem that's definitely on the final and there are four different versions of it, any one of which you might land on. So we're going to be talking about and, and solving each different version, just so you'll be prepared. Um, I do want to talk about this week, this week. We're leading up to graduation this Saturday. Now, everything has changed because this was a last minute decision by the college. However, no, now this is the same. Thursday is our last class. Woo! Um, all makeup work is due by Friday. All right, 4.30, Friday. I mean, not, not the time, but, but the date, April 30th. Um, at 1159 p.m. The final exam is due May 5th at 1159 p.m. Um, and the uh, final, the practice final exam and final exam will remain available until 1159 on May 5th. Um, because, now here's my little paragraph. Because NWAC is hosting face-to-face -face graduation, all full-time faculty will be busy with planning, organizing, etc. I will be unavailable for tutoring on Thursday afternoon, all day Friday, and all day Saturday. And I may just be totally dead on Sunday. But um, I am planning on being back at my computer on Sunday, hopefully after a long night's sleep. So I just wanted you to be aware of all this. OK. Let us start. We're going to be talking about future value, which of course is important to business majors, but it's also important to collectors. Many of us end up being collectors and there is more than one reason to be a collector. You should be a collector because you love what you're collecting, but what you're collecting is also an investment. If you can count on it having a future value. That's called speculation. So um, we're going to be talking about that. And the first version of this future value problem is this. A painting sold for $217 in 1978 and sold again in 1989 for 470 $470. Assume that the growth in the value V of the collector's item was exponential. Okay, let's take a look at this. Let me make it bigger, 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 bigger. There. Here's what we're saying. A painting. So you're a collector of, of paintings. A painting sold for $217 in 1978. Okay, that's the beginning of your time. This is T equals zero. Oh, right. This is T equals zero. And this is going to be the original value. Now it was sold again in 1989. Now that time will be 1989, no, 18, no, definitely not. Nineteen eighty nine minus 
1978. Okay, for 470, this is additional information you're going to need. Assume that the growth in the value V of the collector's item is exponential. What that means is that the formula governing the behavior of, of the price of the painting is A equals A naught E to the KT, where K is the growth constant. Okay. Now the thing is that the writer of this problem wants to call since it's a future value problem, wants to call the value V. So, we're going to be saying that V equals V naught E to the K T. Where V naught is this original price in 1978. That's when we began measuring, so for us, it's the beginning of time. For the painting. So V naught is going to be $217. Now we have to find K, they didn't tell us K. And we can't solve anything until we have K. We need K. So we do have V naught, but we don't have K. So here's what we're going to do. This is the value after time. And the amount of time that's passed goes from 1989 to 1978, which is 11 years. Okay, so originally, originally, the painting sold for $217, and then later it sold for $470. I'm going to write this larger on paper but I want to get it basically figured out here, times e to the k, which we don't know, but we do know that the number of years in which this change occurred is 11 years. So now I'm going to go over here, underneath the news, and write this out. 470 equals 217 times e to the 11k, or the k times 11. So this is, no, uh, this is our first, actually it's not really a number, what it is, is the painting version. So let's call it that. Painting version of future value problem. That's what we're dealing with. So the important information is that in 1978, the painting sold for $217. In 1989, the painting sold for $470. The amount of time that's passed 
is 1989 minus 1978, which is 11 years. And the growth is exponential for all of these. So here is our formula. And what that's going to be for us so we can find K is the later sale value equals the original sale value times E to the K times 11. And this is the formula we're going to be solving in order to find K. And you see the answer down here, round to the nearest thousandth. The thousandth is three decimal places. Okay. So, first thing I do is I take this number in front of E and I divide both sides by it, but I do not calculate in my calculator yet. Leave this the way it is. Believe me, you do not want to get round off error. 470 over 217 equals E, K times 11 and 11 times K are the same thing. We usually put the number first. So 470 over 217 equals E to the 11 K. Okay, now, now that we've divided both sides by the number in front of E, we're going to take the LN the logarithm, the natural logarithm of both sides, but we use ln because E is in the equation. So ln of 470 over 217 equals the ln of E to the 11K. Now why we do that is so that we can bring K down to ground level, so to speak, so we can solve for it. The LN of 470 over 217 equals 11K times the LN of E, where the LN of E is 1. So I'm going to put a big one there. I'm going to put an American one. One. Go with the gold. OK, well, 11K times one is 11K. So you've got the LN of 470 over 217 equals 11k and to find k I divide by 11. I divide by 11 and now is when I bring out the calculator. Ooh, come on, come on, there you go, there you go. The LN of 470 divided by 217, close parentheses, divided by 11, divided by 11, uh, 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 not 111, enter. And that gives us this. 
Now we're supposed to round to three decimal places. Let's go ahead and get a picture of this so that you'll know exactly what I did. equals K. Well, it doesn't equal, even this is an approximation, but we're letting K equal 0 0.070. So now we have our K. And that's what you would put in the answer box for K. Now B, B is to use K. So I, I've always hated it when people say number B, but part B, yeah, and it's got parentheses, a paren around it. Part B is, Find the exponential growth function in terms of t, where t is the number of years since 1978. Now we have to put finding k to work. By, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to make it smaller. There. I'm going to go back up here. to 217, that's going to be our permanent V naught. V of T equals 217 because that's the very first price that was recorded in 1978. 217 times E, now 11 isn't here anymore. 11 was just used to find K. We now are going to use our K number 0 0.070, zero, point zero seven zero t, where t is time in years. And we can answer every future question in this problem with the answer to B right here. This is our formula for the whole rest of the time. Okay, now C. Estimate the value of the painting in 2006. All right, let's write that out because we're on a separate sheet of paper here. Value in 2006. We can do that. First, I have to find out what T is. T is going to be 2006. Let me make sure that's 2006. Always feel insecure. Yeah, it's 2006. Okay. It's 2006 minus the original year, 1978. And that's going to equal whatever my calculator says. Clear. 2006 minus 1978. And I get 28 years. Let me make sure. Yes, 1978. That's 28 years. All you're going to have to do is this. This is code for the value in 28 years. After 28 years has passed from the beginning. Equals 217 
times e to the point 0, 7, 0 times 28. All you have to do is put that in your calculator. It doesn't take logarithms. So 217. Now the quickest way to get the law, um, e to a power is to press second ln. And you can see e to the x above ln. All right, so I'm going to say point zero seven zero times 28. And if you use parentheses, be sure to close your parentheses. Okay, this is what I get. And then I will look and see what the answer is. Oh goodness, let's get a little bigger than that. Okay, well, writing is on the wall or on the paper. Here's the answer I got. Now let's look at their answer. Round to the nearest dollar. That means no cents, no decimal places. So here, here are the dollars. And 55 cents, if you were to round to two decimal places. This five, will cause the zero to round up to a one. So the value in 28 years, let me write this the right way. The value in 28 years is going to be one thousand five hundred and forty one dollars. And that's all you write, no cents. Because it said no cents. It didn't say no cents, it just said round to the nearest dollar. So that's what we do. Okay, part D. What is the doubling time for the value? Good grief. What is the doubling time for the value of the painting to the nearest tenth of a year? That's one decimal place. They say 9.9. .9. Let's see what we get. What is the doubling time? Okay, first, I write down my formula. V of t equals 217 times e to the point 0, 0.070 t. Now doubling, doubling, I hate this phone, but then I hate it when it doesn't work too. I'm just a hater, and haters are going to hate. Shut up. Okay. Basic approach. I need to be better to my phone. I'll think about it later. All right, now what they're asking us is when, that means T, when, is this original price going to double? I don't even bother to multiply it by two, I just write two 
times 217 equals 217 times e to the point zero seven zero t. <clears throat> I don't bother to multiply two times 217 because I'm about to cancel out to, excuse me, 217 when I divide both sides by the number in front of e, which is 217. Now 217 cancels out on both sides of the equation, leaving me with a two on the left and an e to the point zero seven zero on the right. That will always happen. Then I take the ln of both sides. Then I use the power rule to bring this power down in front of the ln of e, so I'll have the ln of two equals 0 0.070 t times the ln of e, which is one, one. So what we have here, we can just not think about it because 0 0.070 t times one is 0 0.070 t. We divide both sides by 0 0.070 which is K, and we will get the doubling time. Now, why did I do that? That's because I was thinking about doing that for you. Point zero seven, zero, and I don't need to do this. What I need to do is put that in my calculator, but I do want you to notice, we've said this before, if you like formulas, the formula for doubling time equals the ln of 2 over k. But again, my opinion, don't bother to memorize it, just work it through. I mean, it's not like it's super hard. Okay, ln. 2 divided by 0 0.070, enter. And we're rounding to one decimal place, as I recall. So indeed, 9.9 .9 is going to be our answer. Nah, we'll just leave it over there. Nine point nine years. Not bad. You wait around for ten years, your investment is, has doubled. Does that mean every 10 years it's going to double? No, because the value is going up exponentially. That means really, really fast, not a straight line. All right, let's see. Now, Find the amount of time after which the value of the painting 
will be six one thousand six hundred eighty seven dollars. OK, this is part E. Hello, Kitty. I don't trust her when she avoids me. It means she might have a bird in her mouth. But you don't, she doesn't. OK. Got to be always on my guard. Protect the environment from the kitties. OK, so I, I write down my formula V of T equals 217 E to the point 0, 070 T. That is our specific exponential growth formula for this problem. That's a lot of words. OK, V of T means the the price after time. So the price, how long will it take the price to rise to six, 1687? 1,687, and let me double check again. Yes. Equals 217 e to the point zero seven zero t now you want to try to pick up on on when you're solving these there's always a kind of a dance to it and they're the same steps first i divide by the number in front of e That gives me 1687 divided by 217 equals E to the point 0, 070 T. Then I take the LN of both sides. So let's actually make a separate step for that so you can so you can see it. OK, so what I've just done. Is the LN of 1687 over 217 equals the LN of E to the point 070 T. Then I use the power rule. And bring down. The point 070 T times the LN of E, which is one. And that equals the LN of 1687 over 217. Then I divide both sides by the number in front of T, which is the K number, 0 .070, 0 .070. And I put that into my calculator, LN 1687 divided by 217, close parentheses, and then that's divided by 0 0.070. This is what I get. Yep, yep, that's what they're looking for. OK, let's copy this. I'm going to have to write out the it, it cut off.
OK, so I'm going to save. And then I'm going to write. 0 0.070. Right, so we have the ln of 1687 divided by 217. That's the ln, and then divided by 0 0.070 gives us 29.29728184, and it goes on from there. But we're told to round to, to one decimal place, the nearest tenth of a year. Round to the nearest Tenth. OK, so we'll have twenty nine point three years. This nine will cause the two to go up to a three. So our time. Will be twenty nine point three years. And they actually don't put a T there, they just put an answer box. So this is our first version of that problem. Let's go back and look at it and ask, is there anything you'd like me to go over? Again. OK, then we're going to do another version of this same problem. This was a painting. This was the painting version. This is the toy tractor version. People will collect anything. Toy tractor version. of the future value problem. OK, and again, let's pull this over. We have pretty much the same story again. A toy tractor sold for $218 in 1980 and was sold again in 1987 for $481. Assume that the growth in the value V of the collector's item was exponential. So it says pretty much the same thing as the last. Now a toy tractor sold for $218 in 1980. This is going to count as our original amount, V naught, and our original time, T naught. Then the tractor is sold again. This is our later time and later amount. Later time. and amount. You use this only to find K. Assume that the growth in the value V of the collector's item is exponential. That means the general form is going to be A equals A naught E to the K T. That is the later amount equals the original amount times E to the growth constant times the number of years. Well, we do know that the original amount, and they tell us that. First, we have to change the letters. V of T, the value after time, equals V naught, the original value, times e to the k t. 
And we know that V naught is 218. V of T equals 218 times E to the KT. All we need is our K. All we need is our K. So that's what we're going to be finding now. V of T equals V naught times E to the KT where okay that's going to be $218 E K times parentheses the later time minus the earlier time so that's going to be 1987 I did it again. 1987. The joys of dealing with a tablet. 1987 minus 1980. So that's what, seven years, right? <coughs> So this is going to be our value after seven years. And we know what that is, because we were told. The value after seven years is $481. So $481 equals 218 times e to the k7 or the way we would usually write it is 7k seven k now we're going to find k Divide by 218. So the 218s cancel out on the right side. You'll have 481 over 218 equals e to the 7k. Now by now, there are gonna be some of you finding formulas for this step as well. That's what I've got. The ln of 481 over 218 equals the ln of e to the 7k. So the ln of 481 over 218 equals 7k times the ln of E, where the ln of E is one. So we'll divide by seven and divide by seven. Now, I wanna make sure that really is 481. Yes, it is. Okay. So K is going to equal the ln of 481 over 218, that amount divided by seven. And we're going to round to three decimal places. LN 481 divided by 218, close parentheses, divided by 7. Enter. I really have to stop eking. It doesn't it doesn't sound very professional, does it? All right, 
just says round to three decimal places. Notice there's a zero after the third decimal place. So we can safely say that our K is extremely close to being 0.113. So that's what we put in the answer box or 0 0.113, although I'm sure that my math lab will take 0.113. You tell me if it doesn't. Now the second step, I mean the second step, the B part, this was the A part. Now that we have our K, we can go running and jumping and just write out the answer to B. Notice that it, V of T equals is written for you. So what you're going to put, I'm going to write it here because I have to. 218 times E to the KT, 0.113T. But this is what you put in the answer box right here. This is going to be our formula for the rest of this problem just like we found the formula for the rest of the painting problem. So whatever version you end up with of this problem, you're going to be doing the same things. OK, now C. Estimate the value of the toy tractor in 2005. So T is going to equal 2005 minus the original time, the original year T naught. And that is 1980, uh, 1980. 1980. So a cool way to keep remembering this is just to do it on the calculator 2005 minus 1980 is 25. that's what t is going to equal so v of 25 that is the value in 25 years equals 218e to the 0 0.113 times 25. And we just put that directly in the calculator. No LNs needed. LN. <laughs> no LNs needed. 218 times that I don't think you have to write times. Second, ln, 0 0.113 times 25. Enter. And I get that, which matches theirs. Okay, basically. Now, are we supposed to round to the nearest cent? Let me see. No, just the nearest dollar. That's right. All right, here we have our decimal, $3675.686. 
007. All right, none of those others matter. All that matters is the six right here because it's right next to the five in the whole dollar part of this decimal. This six will cause that five to go up to a six. So our answer is that the value 25 years later is going to be 3675. Although I believe you do not need to put a dollar sign because they already put it for you. So just write 3676. Although I'm sure your numbers will be changed. I wrote a five, didn't I? Oh well. Six. There now. That's part C. Part D wants the doubling time. We can do that with our eyes closed now. Maybe. Did it again. All right. D, doubling time. Same letter, doubling time. Here we go. Um, two times two, 18. You know the formula, you can use that if you want to. E to the 0 0.113 T. All right. No, I left it out. Time out. Okay. That's why I always put this first. So doggone it, that's precisely what I'm going to do. V of T equals 218E to the 0 0.113T. Now, the price after time, the uh, yeah, the price after time is going to be two times 218 equals 218. This way you don't forget the other part of it. E to the 0 0.113 T. Then we divide. And the 218s cancel. Leaving us with two equals. E to the 0 0.113 T. Then we take the LN of both sides. Then we do what LNs let us do. Go down one more line here. Um, the LN of two equals 0 0.113 T times the LN of E which is one. Same steps over and over. So the LN of two equals 0 0.113 T. We divide out the 0 0.113, 0 0.113. So T is going to equal the LN of two over 0 0.113, or something fairly close, I hope. Clear, the LN of two divided by 0 0.113, enter. And I get six point, now what am I supposed to do here? Doubling time, round to the nearest tenth, 
which means one decimal place. See, there's the one decimal place. So we have, we have this. All right, so we're going to round to one decimal place. After that decimal place, you have another decimal place that's a three. The three cannot cause the one to go up to a two. Therefore, our answer will be 6.1. And they already have years written there. So the doubling time will be 6.1 years. A little over. Now E, let's see if we have room over here to put E. Let's do that. What is E? Find the amount of time after which the value of the toy will be 3,778. Oh my. Three, I'm going to write this. 3,778. Okay, V of T is going to be 3, seven, seven, eight. Let me erase that one. So we're going to use our formula, V of T, equals 218 E to the 0 0.113 T. Now for V of T, we're going to put in 3778, the future value. 3778 equals 218 times e to the 0 0.113t. And then I'll divide by 218. Already looking ahead, saying, Hmm, I'm going to need more room on the left. Okay. So we're going to have 3778 over 218 equals E to the 0 0.113 T. Then I take the LN of both sides. LN. LN. So the LN of three seven seven eight over two eighteen equals zero point one one three T times the LN of E, if you want to bother to write that down. Then we divide by zero point one one three. 0 0.113 and we calculate it. So try to get the pattern we're doing the same thing over and over again to the point of total and complete boredom. And I understand that. 3778 divided by 2, 
18. Close parentheses, then divided by 0 0.113. Enter. And I get 25.24 blah blah blah. Let's see if that, yep, yep. Oh, I am so happy. Have to make it a lot smaller, but that's okay. All right, so a tenth, was that a tenth that I saw down there? Yes, 25.2, that's one tenth, one decimal place. The four will not cause the two to go up to a three. And so after 25.2 years, um, years, but they write down the years for you, so don't do it. And they write down the T equals for you. So um, just write 25.2. Yeah. After 25.2 years, we're going to be able to sell our toy tractor if we want to for $3,778. Now I could just keep doing this. Let me show you the other iterations, if you will. That's another word for it. You might get a version of this problem that deals with a baseball card. Right here we have a baseball card. It sold for, besides that, It sold for $221.1978 and was sold again in 1990 for $444. See, we have that same thing. It was sold the first time, then it was sold the second time. It made more money the second time than it did the first time. Assume that the growth of the value V of the collector's item was exponential. So that again means you're going to use V equals V naught E to the KT. And then your V naught is the first price. V equals 221 times E to the KT. And then to be able to find out what K is, we have to work with this later time and later price. And so T is going to equal how many years after 1978 is 1990. And the price you get to is 444. So that what you're going to have is 444 four equals 221 e to the k times the later date 1990 minus the earlier date 1970. Eight. And then you divide out the number in front of T. And then you, you take the LN of both sides. Then you bring down the exponent. And it goes like that over and over again.
Ah, and then the fourth version. Let me make it bigger. The fourth version deals with a doll. A doll, you know that, that people collect dolls, and there are some that are very valuable. A doll sold for $245 in 1975. So this is the original price and the original year. V naught and T naught. And was sold again. So this is the later year and the later price. And we assume that the gro uh, growth of this particular collector's item is exponential. So you do it all over again. You use the later year and the later price to find your K. Then you write out what your formula is for this problem. Then you estimate the value in 2010. Then you find the doubling time. Then you find the amount of time before or the amount of time needed for the price to grow to a certain price. So all of these are the same problem, just with a different backstory. Here you've got, here you had a doll. Here you've got a baseball, or a baseball card, a baseball card, excuse me. Here you've got a toy tractor. And here you've got a painting. All the same exact steps. Now what I'm going to do is take these four pages and merge them together with the work that we did over here. And put the whole thing in your notes. And I'll have to be sure to stipulate that work appears at end. Okay, after this, you have two more problems that I'm aware of offhand. They both deal with um, exponential decay, and we'll learn how to do those tomorrow. But for now, it's almost time for you to go. Do you have questions? I assume not. So you know how to get in touch with me. You know I won't be available on Thursday afternoon or Friday or Saturday. And you know that if I survive all that graduation stuff, that I will appear on Sunday answering your questions and doing everything I can to help you make an A on the exam but I certainly will be at my office hours tomorrow and Wednesday, and we have class tomorrow and Wednesday. Oh, and office hours on Thursday. Yes, I'll be there in the morning on Thursday. So I'm definitely gettable. It's just Thursday afternoon and Friday and Saturday that I'm gonna be busy with graduation stuff. So I will talk to you tomorrow when we will decay. That doesn't sound very good, does it? No, but 
You'll find quicker, easier ways to do that if you choose to, but again, again, I choose to do, do it from scratch to make sure I have it forgotten a little bit of the shortcut formula. So I'll see you then if you don't have any questions. Bye-bye.